So dear audience, uh, in this short presentation, I will talk about uh, an autoimmune skin disease. And I want to show how we have modeled this disease under laboratory conditions in a tissue slide. So uh, to show it, uh, at first, I, I would like to talk a little bit about this disease. It's called uh, bullous pemphigoid, which is a so-called autoimmune blistering skin disease. Okay, what does it mean? In this picture, uh, you can see the most characteristic lesions of the disease, these thick blisters on the skin. I think it's not hard to imagine that these, uh, these lesions uh, cause very unpleasant symptoms as pain and itching, and with that, uh, this uh, disease results in a severe decrease in the quality of life of the patients. In the figure under that, I, I tried to sum up uh, the main points of the pathogenesis uh, of this disease and the forming of these blisters. So what is known is that uh, by this patient, so-called autoantibodies appear in the blood, of the, uh, in the blood against uh, proteins located in the skin between the two uppermost layers uh, the so-called epidermis and dermis. Uh, it is known that these autoantibodies form depositions in the skin, and uh, th these depositions result in an infiltration of immune cells. These immune cells then damage, damage the skin, and uh, at the end, these two layers, the epidermis and the dermis, separate from each other, and that leads to the forming of these thick blisters. Unfortunately, despite the growing scientific knowledge about the disease, the therapeutic options are very limited by this disease and no specific targeted therapy is available. But to searching for new targets, uh, we first need a model uh, that mimics the most important aspects of the disease. And in the next, next slide, I want to introduce you the possibilities that we have if, you, if we want a model for this disease. The first possibilities are the so-called in vivo models by these, we use, uh, for example, a mice, so an animal, uh, to model the human pathology in a living organism. By, so these, these, these models contain lots of information as all the molecular com and cellular components are, are there in this living organism. Uh, but it's also true that uh, they are mostly hard to perform. We need to uh, work with living animals. And uh, it is also not always clear what's the human relevance of these findings with animal experiments. The second possibilities are the so-called in vitro models. By these models, uh, they are uh, easier to perform because we don't need to work with living animals and they are simple systems. And we, it's also possible to use only human materials. Uh, it is, uh, however, also true that the information content of this system are much more limited as uh, we just have isolated cells without uh, intercellular connections and without uh, a lot of uh, different cell types. The third possibilities are the so-called ex vivo models. Here, uh, we use not just only uh, uh, separated cells, but also whole tissues, in our case, skin tissue. Uh, here, it's also true that we don't need to, uh, to work with living animals and uh, we can use only human materials by these systems that make the human relevance much more clear uh, uh, by these experiments. Uh, but the informational content of these systems are higher than the uh, in vitro models, as we have a lot of different cell types and uh, intercellular connections as well. So our, aim, our first aim was to establish an ex vivo model to investigate this autoimmune skin disease in our lab. And how, how have we do that? So we wanted to, uh, to model the most uh, characteristic feature of the disease, the separation between the epidermis and the dermis. And to do that, we worked together with the dermatology department of Semmelweis University, from where we received healthy human skin tissues. From this tissue, we produced really thin, five micrometer uh, um, uh, tight uh, frozen uh, skin sections. And we also received uh, the serum of bullous pemphigoid patients, uh, patients who have this uh, autoimmune skin disease uh, from the dermatology department, uh, which serums contain the pathogen autoantibodies against the skin proteins. So we treated uh, the tissues with this serum, and at first we examined if the autoantibodies form depositions on our, our tissues as well as in the disease. What have we seen? At first I showed to you uh, a control experiment. Here we uh, 
uh, we treated the tissue with a control serum uh, from, a healthy, uh, from a healthy individual. And uh, the blue staining shows the cell nuclei uh, in the epidermis. And this green color would show the specific signal of the antibody deposition. Here it can be seen that uh, there are no, no specific signal at all. Uh, but when we treated the tissues with the bolus pemphigoid serum, I think the differences immediately can be seen. Uh, there is a really strong uh, linear uh, deposition of autoantibodies between the upper layer, the epidermis, and the dermis. So we managed to show the antibody deposition uh, on the skin tissues, and the next aim was to, uh, to produce dermoepidermal separation. And to do that, uh, we treated these tissues with freshly isolated immune cells, isolated from the peripheral vein of uh, volunteers, um, uh, in the presence of fresh uh, human blood plasma. And we um, performed hematoxin and dousin staining, which is a basic staining method. And uh, we investigated the dermoepidermal separation in light microscopy. And again, what have we seen? So here, again, a control experiment. Uh, we treated this tissue with control serum, and it can be seen that at the end of the experiment, the connections between the epidermis and the dermis are intact. But what, what have we seen at the bullous uh, pemphigoid tissues? I think, again, the differences immediately can be seen. Uh, there are a lot of immune cells at the site of the dermoepidermal connection, and there is also a tissue loss between these two layers. So we managed to reproduce the dermoepidermal separation in our model system. Hooray! We managed to establish it. But the next question is, what can we do with this model? Why is it good that we established it? And to, to understand it, I want to show uh, an experiment uh, when we uh, examined the effect of an inhibitor called entosplatinib. This is an inhibitor that is known that uh, blocks an intracellular molecule in immune cells, but has uh, no medical use. So it was not clear if it can have any effect on the uh, dermoepidermal separation in our model. So what was the result? Here, the first two pictures shows tissues that were uh, not treated with the inhibitor, uh, and it can be seen that, again, our model worked properly. When we treated the, the tissue with uh, control serum, uh, the dermoepidermal separation, no dermoepidermal separation can be seen, but the bullous pemphigoid serum resulted in a huge dermoepidermal separation in the tissues. But what happened as we applied the inhibitor? Again, as we treated the, the tissues with control serum, no dermoepidermal separation happened. Okay, it's not a surprise. Uh, but as we treated the tissues with bullous pemphigoid serum, again, no dermoepidermal separation happened. But okay, just that, that, that's just one picture. Uh, to have a bigger picture, we uh, made a quantification assessing the whole dermoepidermal length and the ratio of the dermoepidermal separation on this whole length. And in this figure, we read the control uh, treated tissues blue the BP serum treated tissues, it can be seen that as we applied an elevating concentration of this inhibitor, uh, less and less dermoepidermal separation could be detected, and at the maximum concentration, it was almost the same as the control. So we can see that this inhibitor uh, can inhibit the dermoepidermal separation in our model. To conclude our findings, uh, we managed to establish an ex vivo, fully human, in all component human uh, skin separation assay in our lab, in a tissue slide, and we, can, we could show that entosplatinib, an inhibitor, can inhibit the skin separation in this model. That means that this, uh, this inhibitor can be a promising approach uh, by this disease. And it's also true that this model can be used to find uh, new therapies in the future. Uh, at the end, I want to thank uh, especially my supervisor, Professor Attila Mochei, and uh, for all the people who helped with my research, and I also uh, thank the kind attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this uh, nice lecture. Please meet us uh, in the middle. <laughs>